Hello you beautiful people, Aaron here, back with another video. So this is the first time I'm doing this, but I want to go back to my Nahida initial character guide and analysis video and see how accurate it was while also offering my own insight onto certain things as to what I know now, specifically to help those out who may still be on the fence with whether or not they should pull for Nahida since she's like leaving in like two days or something like that. I have basically only been playing her since she was released. So I want to say I feel like I have a decent grasp on her. We're mainly going to be going over the parts of the video that I have something to say. We're going to skip over anything that is just like not really warranted. I'll only be talking about like things that need to be talked about or things that were like incorrect, things that changed since uh, beta to launch, um, stuff like that and then talk about the final ultimatum. And if you like this stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely comment down below and tell me if you do like this type of video. I'll make more. Uh, I'll be doing another one for Layla. These are my two test runs to see how well these things go. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Ahida seems to be an all-purpose Dendro unit that focuses on Dendro elemental reactions with an emphasis on acting as a Dendro driver. So Dendro driver, it's partially the case she can, especially for like Nilo teams, but but in most situations, uh, it seems like she is support. She does work really well as a Dendro driver, but she doesn't offer utility when she's a driver. And that's the thing that sucks about her. She only offers like damage buffing for her own damage when she's a driver. Her normal and charge attacks have normal ICD, while her skill has no ICD. Here, I wish that I talked about her constellations. Her C2 is one of them, and I feel like I should point that out, especially for like the dolphins, because the whales are going to whale. They're going to whale no matter what. They're whales. But like, if you're looking for a second constellation, which is, you know, normally where the dolphins stop, her second constellation is like freaking broken. It is very similar to Raiden's C2, except it's for your entire team. The only like downside is that you have to have an Electro character in the party, but then everyone gets basically Raiden's C2. Like it's, it, that's crazy. That's crazy good. Just that part. And then the other part where like your bloom reactions crit, I feel like that is definitely like the worst part about it. But since, you know, you're basically doubling the damage on blooms averaging about like 35k, being able to hit one for like 70k is freaking insane. <laughs> Nothing to scoff at. It's crazy. Hersey one's pretty, pretty garbage though. <laughs> for main stats, a focus would still be on EM, EM, and crit for an all around test build. Okay, I completely just agree with this right now. Actually, not entirely completely but i do disagree with the fact that her best all around is em em right? because her best weapons grant her a lot of elemental mastery so you're just going to have like so much elemental mastery in general that going in em goblet is just kind of not worth it over going the extra dendro damage for just more damage in general you are losing out on a little bit of elemental skill crit rate a little bit of elemental skill damage percent bonus and a little bit of elemental mastery buffing but on the upside you are getting a lot more damage off of her elemental skill which helps out a lot more and increases the entire team's dps generally more but that's with an elemental mastery weapon like if you don't have an elemental mastery weapon like you're using like the witsith or something then like em for like a goblet or a circle is generally good however this set falls off harshly when you want to use her as an on-field driver since she would overcap herself with elemental mastery. It faces another wall when a different character like Kazuha or Sucrose is on the same team and has a higher elemental mastery. This is due to her buff which takes the elemental mastery of the character with the highest EM on the team to buff the on-field party member. And this, yeah, that's um completely right. There are like a lot of situations where I would want to like use Kazuha. Kazuha's grouping is just like so crazy. It's to the point where you don't need too much EM on Nahida because Kazuha is completely making up for like the entire buffing capabilities by working with Nahida's, uh, what is it? Her Ascension 4 passive, I think? I forget. Or is it her first one? The one that, like, allows her to buff allies with her elemental burst. He's able to completely make up for all of her lack of elemental mastery. Same thing with, like, Venti. Same thing with Sucrose. Animal characters are just, like, really great for that. In this situation that I have now, I have my Nahida at, like, almost 700 elemental mastery. That is just with deep wood. That is just with a weapon. That is just with some good elemental mastery subsets and an elemental mastery sands. And she's at, like, 700. If I put a deep wood on her she's going to go all the way up to 1000 and like i mentioned this like a bit later but you don't want to go like anything
something beyond like 800 on her. It is extreme overkill. I, I mentioned it, but in practice, I, I completely take it back. I don't think that this set is very good for her at all. These situations are mainly where this set is best used, and it's where she excels. So it seems to be her best set. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It is her best set. There's very few situations in where it's not. It's really only not in case you want to like mega buff a certain character. But why the hell are you using Nahida to like mega buff like a Sino or a Kutsin or something like that? You know, just throw in a Kazuha. He's going to be doing the same thing and completely making up for it and then just doing it better. Aiming for about 700 EM on her, then going for crit seems to be the best way to go. I talk about this way too long. I don't blame any of y'all if y'all just stop watching. Yeah, it looks like everything freaking tanked here. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but to sum it up a thousand times better, do what's on screen, HP, attack, EM, and then crit for the circlet. For the goblet, if you have an EM weapon, go dendro damage. If you have a something else, go EM. That's it. Simple. Easy. And then just focus on like normal like crit stuff for the substats. Simplest solution. Lost Prayer got a bump up mainly because of the damage percent modifier being used to benefit her normal attacks a lot more, and the fact that it can now build its stacks. And after that, we have the options that you were better off not going. I feel like I wrapped on Wandering Evenstar a lot. That's for good reason. It is pretty trash. I have one at Refinement 2. It's not a very good weapon. However, it's pretty decent if you want to like use it in like an aggravate team and you want to like super buff someone. At that point, it's definitely much more worth it. Just go like full EM um, and try and get as much elemental mastery as possible. So then you'd be buffing the on-field aggravate DPS characters elemental mastery and attack, which is absurd. But then again, why would you do that when you could go map a mare? You know, a map a mare is free. So it's it's good in some situations, but in most, eh. Sacrificial fragments. This weapon mainly benefits from having extra skill procs than other weapons, which helps its DPS. With spread, the other weapons are able to keep up with it a lot better due to her elemental bursts passive with two electro characters in the party. Sacrificial fragments is also not as great in quicken situations because it doesn't have any sort of multiplier. It just has the elemental mastery, which does really suck. It sucks hard, but that's why all of the other weapons are generally better. It's just because they do more. But yeah, sacrificial fragments is not that great there, but it's great for buffing. This I can I, I, I sort of disagree with. Um, Magic Guide is good in theory. However, in practice, it's not. Its main issue is that Nahida applies so much dendro and it's like strong dendro. It's 1.5 units, which most of the elemental application in the game is only one, which means that it just stays on forever. Her dendro does not go away. So it's very, very difficult to make this weapon work because dendro is going to be on the target and not a hydro or electro. That's the downside of this weapon. You got to force it to be good. But when you do force it to be good, it is pretty damn good. Map of Mirror, the thing about this weapon is that it's very similar to that, except it also offers buffing. The buffing doesn't really matter in Bloom teams because you're focusing on elemental mastery and whatnot. It's hard. These weapons have issues in and of themselves. This also doesn't offer as much elemental mastery, which kind of stinks. They're just like, okay, I feel. The other thing is I don't think that Wood Sith is her best dolphin option anymore. Well, one, I don't like the Wood Sith. I find it very inconsistent, so it might just be a bias, but Sacrificial Fragments has just been like so nice. It's been extremely nice to just have and very convenient because like in a lot of situations, everything will die before the skill cooldown comes back up, even though it's really short. And that's just because like she just offers so much freaking damage. But in those situations, it's very nice to just have another skill. It's not that much, but I think Sacrificial is definitely better than that. She works really well with characters like Ke Qing and Nilo, who both heavily benefit from the danger of reaction. What the hell? Why did I think that this was a good music choice? This song is bad for this type of video. Oh my god. Ke Qing works really well with Nahida. Ke Qing and Nahida are, is like the broken combo. It, it's so freaking strong. Ke Qing was already really strong before. Uh, she just got like super buffed by Nahida. She doesn't like even need to build much elemental mastery with her because Nahida just offers so much elemental mastery. It, it's crazy. Since Nahida also has absurd dendro application when on field, she's able to fit in as a sole dendro applicator, making room for other hydro characters that could be more beneficial than another dendro character. Okay, so here's the thing about Nilo Bloom Team. It does work and it works very well. However, while she is a sole dendro applicator, Nahida is normally not the one who will be triggering the bountiful cores. It's going to be your hydro characters, which I found surprising. Even when like Nahida is like driving in a Nilo team, she will most likely not be the one rocking the bountiful cores. So it's going to be like the rest 
of your team, which does suck. But with the new artifact set that boosts uh, bloom damage of all sorts of blooms, it's going to be a lot better in those situations because now Nilo can just equip that set and you can go whoever else that you want. But yeah, that is an issue. Now he does Dendro application is just so strong that the Bountiful Core damage will not be benefiting from Nahida's already very high elemental mastery. Would be these characters would be the likes of Xing Shou, Yulan, or even Candace. Xing Shou is actually not that great. Like he is very good, but like if you want to use him for like the hydro resistance fitting, uh, it's not very useful because no one on that team is dealing hydro damage. <laughs> but you can use Candace and then have her also on the, the Flowers of Paradise Lost set and have Nahida as a driver. That's going to guarantee that she will be the one rocking the Bountiful Cores because she has giant AoEs. She also has slow Hydro application and everyone is getting applied with a bunch of Dendro anyway, which means she will be the one that is guaranteed to proc the Bountiful Cores. I think Candice definitely has a, a place there, especially since elemental damage bonuses really help out Nahida on field. If you're going to run it, anyone, I think it's Candice and Yolan. There is another synergy that I forgot, and that is Nahida's synergy with Yaimiko. The reason why they work so well together is when you use Yaimiko as like a main DPS, Nahida is giving her the quicken reaction for her to then aggravate off of, but she's also buffing Yaimiko's elemental mastery while Yaimiko could still build a lot of attack. And they're both like dealing like a bunch of damage with their elemental skills. And she also doesn't really need to worry about her energy as much. And then when Yaimiko's turret hits one of the enemies and ends up making like a chain reaction that allows Nahida's skill to then deal damage, which applies Dendro on everyone. So then the next shot that Yaimiko's turret deals to another enemy, it then applies the Quicken Aura. It's just really freaking good, especially when they're all grouped together. I enjoy this play style so much more than almost any other Electro DPS in the game because it's just so much damage and it's such high value. It's crazy good. There's very little that beats it. It's insane. I know while he does benefit from Aggravate and only Aggravate, he does not synergize well with Nahida due to his absurdly long on-field window and her limited off-field dendro application. Sino is not that great of a pair with Nahida in all situations, but in the situations where they are a good pair, she is completely uncontested. She is absurdly broken and she just can't be switched out for anyone. Like he's still not great just because like even though he does get super buffed by her, so does Kuching and Kuching works a lot better with Nahida. They synergize just a lot better. It's similar to like a Hu Tao Yoemiya situation. Sino's the Yoemiya, Hu Tao is Kuching. Yes, while the damage is not bad, she deals about two-thirds the damage that Agan Yu would in the same amount of time while using Belt. While that so I mentioned that, that she deals about two-thirds of the damage that uh, Gan Yu deals, but the thing that I don't mention is the fact that Nahida is a freaking support. She's a support that's dealing two-thirds the damage as a uh, main DPS. That's stupid. Like, on top of that, she's also buffing everyone, and like, she actually has like a really good buff on like Gan Yu's like, what, 20% cryo damage? Gan Yu's like, not a bad support either, but she's not like an amazing support, you know, she supports Venti. <laughs> However, these upsides do come at a cost. While she is good when using her within her own element, she is absolutely unusable in other compositions. This is unlike all other Archons in the game that see relevant play despite their element. It is the case that this is unlike every other Archon, but while that specific situation does not work with every other Archon, a similar thing does work with the other Archons. Like, you know, you, you don't need absurdly insane CC with Venti, then you don't go Venti. You don't need absurd on-field battery potential with Raiden Shogun, so you don't go her. Like, you're not going to put Raiden Shogun in a Hu Tao team, or you don't need an absurd shield to help you tank through everything. Like, you're not going to put Zhang Li in a Freeze team. It it's stuff like that. So while she has that, like, specific scenario that is not similar with every other Archon, every other Archon does have a strength and a weakness. So based on the information above, I'm going to have to give Nahida a very strong 5 out of 5 star.
starts, since she is so strong in her own area, despite the fact that she cannot stray from that designated area. I would compare her similarly to Fischl or Rosaria, as they have multiple team comps and multiple situations where they are incredibly powerful picks due to both damage and utility, but they're not going to fit into every comp you use. I think that her power level in general is a lot higher than the other two, but like specifically with Rosaria, she has anti-synergy in her own kit where she is incentivized to build like a lot of crit rate, but she's cryo, so she gets passive crit rate that is not counted towards crit rate, kind of incentivized to not build that much crit rate, which then like lowers the crit rate that she grants everyone else. Whereas like with Nahida, she has nothing of the sort. You really need to build in like way too much elemental mastery in order for it to start being like a bit anti-synergistic. But even then, it's not really anti-synergistic. It's just harsh diminishing returns. Me comparing her to Fischl is definitely like probably one of the better ways to go about it. I feel like Ishing Sho and Bennett are other characters to compare them with because she offers supportive utility and damage, which if a character has, it instantly like makes them really good unless both of them are completely trash or unless one of them is basically non-existent. What a poor final song to use. Well, that was a bad choice. Um, <laughs> so, um, was I right for the most part? I think so. I think for the most part, I was correct. I think I took a nudge at her in certain places where I shouldn't have when it basically meant nothing. Like for instance, the element thing and the fact that she's tied to her elements didn't expect her to be worse because of it. But it is just like a little downside that I thought I would mention. I don't think that I said that she was going to be like a bad unit. She looked very strong from the start. I think I just undervalued her a little bit more than I should have. She just offers so much. I think I was pretty accurate. I just undervalued her a little bit too much. Uh, maybe a little bit. Uh, like I compared her to Rosaria. <laughs> I think I undervalued her a little bit, but she's just really good in everything, Dendro. Even if you like have burning on, she's the one applying the burning and she applies it so often, but she has to be on field with that. I've noticed that with burning, if she's not on field, you have to be doing something else to get like another Dendro application for her skill to then reprop because burning only happens at like one instance and it's on her Dendro application. Burning is just an annoying reaction. I made everything so long in this video. I gotta trim it down to my next one, man. We don't got time for this. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna try and trip this one down because I've been recording for a long time. I ramble a lot. Again, tell me what y'all think about this new content in the comments down below. Tell me your experiences with Nahida. I've been having a blast. She's amazing. I highly recommend her. She's great. That's all I could say. Uh, but other than that, I will get out of your hair. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.